Real quick, I wanted to talk about our next little tech tip. This is for your hot start, these threads here. And your hot start and your choke lever, they're actually both incredibly important to make sure they're in good condition before trying to tune your carb. Uh, start there first, start with your intake boots, right? And then start here. The uh, reason being, they're so fragile. They're made out of plastic. And oftentimes they'll strip. Uh, they're a pain in the butt to try and get in and out of there. So uh, you end up kind of, oh, I got it just right. Okay, done, you know? Or the O-ring itself is missing or it's damaged or something like that. Uh, but this is, I've seen this broken before and it ends up completely feeding your carburetor a whole ton of air that shouldn't be there. And uh, I'll actually show you what this bike came with. Kind of a cool idea. Uh, you probably look into it. All right, so here is our hot start plunger on in the spring here. So this is black, but it's actually aluminum. This here is an aluminum cap uh, that won't strip out like all these threads always do because you're never gonna get it in there quite right the first time. But what this does, it helps to ensure and makes this piece just so much more durable. So when it goes in and it threads in, uh, you can just be guaranteed it's not gonna break on you. It's not gonna feed your carburetor weird things. So th this does have an O-ring on it. And when we go to replace this and put this back in, I will be replacing that O-ring again, just to ensure this isn't trying to mess with any jetting whatsoever. But if you're, it seems like you've got a ton of lean conditions, you got a hanging idle, it's not happy, it's popping, it's backfiring on D-cell. And you're like, man, I just got my, my pilot jet all sorted out. What the heck could be going on? Check that. That's a good place to start too. So moving over here, to kind of where our throttle cam is. Working with this guy, we discovered there are actually some really nice needle bearings on this side and on the opposing side. They're not in the parts diagram at all, so they're not a replaceable item. You'd probably have to replace the carburetor in order to even get new bearings. So what we did, I sprayed some carb cleaner in there, clean in there just a little bit. It was pretty gunky. Uh, you have to be very careful though, there is actually a oil seal, I'd say, um, here on the outside. This right here is actually made of rubber and uh, it glides nicely along here, but just make sure you don't damage that when you're putting this in and don't use any sort of sharp metal objects to actually be cleaning this out in here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna again be using our seal grease so it's nice and light and not heavy and thick. Uh, tech tip number four, uh, we're gonna use these brushes. So this is from Amazon, and I uh, I used to use acid brushes all the time. You buy them at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're that aluminum sheathed brush with the black bristles. These work so much better because I was always leaving behind those black bristles. I'd always be trying to put on um, like Yamaha Bond or Honda Bond uh, sealant on these mating surfaces, and you'd be leaving behind all these black. Uh, uh, black little bristles and it's like well, what's the point in that? I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm being counterproductive right now. I might as well just use my finger So uh, same thing with putting on grease on things and uh, I was like well shoot this is kind of useless So I ended up just picking up these like the cheapest paint brushes I could find But at least they hold on to all their bristles and I've never had any issues with that any you know from from You know since then uh, what I am gonna do though is make a minor modification and we're just gonna make this kind of into a tip and we don't care because these are uh, worth like two cents a piece. And that's a little bit of a finer point there. So we'll just get a little, a little bit of grease on our brush there, we'll fit it in and then just spin it around. All right, this guy can now slide in there. That's a good idea just to give her a couple spins here before fully installing. That was all nice and lubed up. Now, I can't actually install this cam yet. And uh, here's why. So I, this, is, this here is the roller uh, lever arm that fits into these slots here. And it actually pulls up uh, see so it goes in like this. 
and it actually pulls up like right, this as the cam moves. Well, um, I'm thinking let's get some, you know, as nice and as smooth as possible uh, action here with the throttle. And I was just feeling that these these roller balls here, um, they're, they're really rough. They're really textured. And so I, uh, I was thinking, well, they're probably just some hard plastic or something. I'll just go and uh, quickly, quickly take those over to the buffing machine and uh, smooth them off. They're not as hard as I thought. Turns out uh, real soft plastic. So I ended up kind of burning through one side of that ball. You can see how red that is and it f made a flat spot. So uh, definitely a fail on that part there. So we've got another one of these on order. So since we can't put this in right now, we're gonna have to wait for this uh, new part to come in the mail, but that should be coming right about now. And just like that, we've got our new part. Now you can definitely tell those rollers are kind of that more hard plastic, much, much smoother. So if you really want just that buttery throttle slide, probably recommend replacing this guy. It only ended up being uh, 20 bucks, maybe 16 to 20 bucks uh, for this piece here. If you kind of look at the two maybe in comparison, this wheel over here is a little bit rough. I don't think it affected the throttle slide much in the way that it moved, but uh, if you want the best, most buttery throttle, recommend going with that guy. Large hook hooks into this groove here. If we hold our spring in place and press with our thumb and hold our accelerator pump open like this, we insert our shaft into our bearing and seat. We just slide it down until our spring engages right there with our little notch. Okay, we're just gonna keep sliding a little bit further down, a little bit further down until eventually, uh, this side of the shaft connects with our throttle position sensor, just like that. And then we're gonna rotate our spring assembly since it's spring loaded. Rotate, rotate, rotate until our throttle stop right up here engages with our idle screw right there. So um, that is what you do with all the pieces together. So now that you've seen this portion, I'll pull her back out again and we'll go back to this step. So what we need to do is get our two washers in order. So we've got one steel washer and we've got one nylon washer and the steel is gonna go on first. Just like that. And then our nylon goes on there. Just so that way if it ever rubs up against our slide arm here, it doesn't actually wear into it or drag on it any of it. So we're gonna install it like this. A little bit further back, just like that. I'm just gonna hook it in there, perfect. That's all it takes there. Slide it through just a little bit like that. Now we can return back over to this side, hold our accelerator pump over, keep rotating, rotating right there, and we're in place. And now we have our slide arm installed, just like that. Let's put on our slide itself, just the most tiniest amount on each one of these. And hopefully what that will do is kind of just keep them in place while we're installing. Okay. So if you pick it up and we bring it over here, keep everything level or else your wheels will most likely fall off. Go ahead and insert this down into the carburetor chamber. Align your slide lever and just go ahead and let it drop on down. So you can see how much those wheels here on the arm move and operate, they go back and forth every single time 
that you operate that throttle and that is just buttery, buttery smooth. Feels nice. All right, now we can replace our screw here on the top that holds in our slide arm. Now that we're attached to our throttle cam here, everything slides up and down super smooth. Feels nice and tight, but also very smooth. Okay, let's put in our needle. So we got our new needle in. Here it is. We just had a little bit of wear on our needle here. I could just feel some imperfections with my finger. And uh, just to be safe, since this meters so much fuel, uh, just went ahead and got a new one. I just have to use a pair of pliers, make sure and secure it. Some people kind of use the table and snap it on. Um, it works with this guy on top, it's a lot harder. Uh, but then also, this kind of, uh, I, I like to think that it doesn't, it doesn't fly away on me ever. This has never failed on me once because that just snaps right into place there. So we've got our needle clip exactly where we want it. Third spot from the top and also from the bottom, so right in the middle. Okay, and we'll just slide this down into place, just like that. So we also got in our bottom cap here. This is just kind of what it looks like. This one actually came with a magnet on the bottom, I guess any sort of steel got in your fuel somehow. Um, it's gonna stick to the bottom of the bowl and not try to find its way up into your carburetor. Um, but almost just doing finger tight is really what you want. But we'll just give her one tiny little twist with our socket, just like that, just to make sure she seats. Boom, easy peasy, that's all you need. Never coming out. Uh, let's get on some hoses. Just picked up this kit from Rocky Mountain. This is just their tusk. This is what the blue looks like in comparison to the red. Just for if you guys are making decisions on everything. Turns out a five foot standard kit, not enough. Not enough. All right, so I do have some more vent line here. So just in the interest of showing you how to route everything, I'll use that for now. All right, so now to combine these two together, we are going to grab some of our heat shrink here and then feed our hoses in from this side until about there. And then on this side, all the way down. All right, so, and then lace these back through. Okay, and once we've got it where we like it, lock those in place. Uh, but I'm gonna bring the engine over here and I'll show you one more little tip. So what I like to do is install our carburetor and then bring these hoses down where they're gonna go. In order to train those hoses, I'm just gonna use some zip ties. Because right now, uh, they're pretty free floating. What we can do, we're just gonna zip tie these hoses in place. This way, they get a lot of time with the heat of the engine uh, to loosen up and relax. 
and then re-solidify again when it cools, heat, cool, heat, cool, heat, cool. Um, yeah, that way, when we go to take these off, they're already kind of trained to stay where they're supposed to go and everything looks nice and tidy. All right, so we've got brand new mid-body gaskets, uh, brand new gaskets that deal with our air fuel screw, a rebuild kit for hot start. The slide is brand new and you know rides really, really nicely. And we know that our accelerator pump works just fine. We replace the seals down in there. But if it feels like you need a factory reset on your carburetor, that's how you do it. However, none of this would be worth it at all if you don't have a good running engine. So if you'd like to see the assembly of this engine build, go ahead and click right there. And until next time, ride safe and live moto.